So Nepal is going to be the first map of many control maps to come. To Nepal. Again, we got two shots here for Luminosity to uh, try and fight back before NWA just take the series, already up one game to zero. And I'm getting uh, Martin Freeman and Michael Sarah today. I used to get Shia LaBeouf and Elijah Wood, so I think I'm aging. I've aged from one hobbit to another for Frodo to Bilbo. Yeah. And I made the, made the joke earlier in chat, but I guess <laughs> soon I'll be Gollum. It's soon, man. <laughs> soon, man. It's, it's okay. I think you age like fine wine, oh. but Evok leaves the game. Luckily, he joins back, so avoiding that little troublesome whatever could have happened right there. Just a prank, bro. Um, I guess I, I could be Gandalf the White and Gandalf the Grey before I'm Gollum. Gollum's like the extreme end. Gollum's like, you're just senile. Yeah, like, just <laughs> nothing makes sense. Shriveled, senile person. All right, so almost ready <laughs> as the door is open. Finally, we got to this grand final start. It's going to be a lot of control, though, so we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and start watching the NWA side since we have been away from them for a short time. We'll see. Uh, Hafi is cool, or Hafi cool, starting on May, which is a very cool character. But it, I'm very curious to see how it's going to play out here on the Paul uh, village. Yeah, they're able to shut them off immediately, bind them some more time to do some more DPS behind the line. Vainless does end up taking down Ruster, and Reels does take down Zeb, so Tsini is able to trade eventually on screen. This is just a bunch of trade kills back and forth right now, but that May is creating such a big problem. Unfortunately, I think unable to ice buff. May have used that before, but Zini, you know, gets taken down so much, uh, so much, so easy, unable to. You know, really repel any additional damage. They are able to capture the point. Unfortunately, the rest of the team is not with them just yet as the entire attacking team has kind of formed together. So they have a little bit of opportunity to take that high ground before they have to push. NWA off to a hot start. Everything going their way. They claim the point. They've got 13% and building. Tracer looping around the back side here, trying to get free shots into the Lucio. Actually, it's going to be uh, the DPS that he starts out on. Pulse Bump goes out, does catch Mineral, and a lot of damage on Ruster. Sini goes down as well, and it looks like uh, there will be no issues for NWA this time around. They easily push that... Um, Offense back, Icefeld being the last to fall and rejoin his team. That's 32% now for NWA. Again, hot start, hot defense, and now they've got the ult advantage as well. Things are looking... Uh, oh, wait, they don't have the ult advantage. They will be very soon, though, with Hafi Cool and that Blizzard. That's what I'm going to be watching, as Blizzard has been such a game changer uh, since the patch. I'm curious to see what Hafi can do with it. Yeah, they're definitely approaching the weird way. The only the Graviton Search catches two targets. Both of them are relatively tanky, but of course they easily take, take them down. Right now, if I'm Hoppy score right now, I die right now. I say I don't want to waste my Blizzard, especially on here. The rest of the offense just burning ultimates, willy-nilly trying to take the point, and they are able to. Great immediate push, but yeah, like we talked about before, the ultimate advantage is now in the hands of the side of NWA. Sure, they have to deal with Sini and Mineral, but that Blizzard should be more than enough to commit some area of control and just freeze targets. Sure, it's cool you have shields, but those shields will go away if you're frozen long enough. <laughs> That's true. Freeze is actually a really good deterrent uh, for basically anybody. May dropping that Blizzard will be impactful as a couple members get frozen and a couple others are edged away. Easily flips the point back in favor of NWA. I was watching Zave there, but unable to get a lot of damage done or support even as uh, his team basically flops so quickly. Reels gets a nice, nice pulse bomb there to uh, try and even the score, but Manitan just lobbing the bomb right into his face, flips it back over for LG. 80% now, though, for NWA means one flip and one defense could just end the round. Yeah, and that's super smart on their uh, good, you know, good peace of mind to get onto the point and convert that, making sure that, hey, even though we lose the fight, we don't lose percentage on that initial point. And right now, they're just trying to build up ultimates. They're trying to, you know, hey, kite off the back line, try to fight that way, and Hoppy Cool in the background, or switch to the Genji, just making sure to create havoc in the background, just gain ultimate charge, and Sini goes down, but Hoppy Cool is immediately traded. And I, I mean, if I'm the side of the offense right now, I'm a little fine with this, but right now, I would just back up, stop myself from being staggered, or just run off and. You know, Vainless being alive for so long, I guess, is fine, but they have time for, I guess, two or three really good pushes, and they do definitely do have the ultimates to push everyone off the off the point. Unfortunately, though, Hoffy is cool, still only at 33%, so that Dragon Blade won't be coming out anytime soon, and if anything, it will be coming out after Sini's, so... You know, I mean, it's it's all about whether or not that Palm Rage can knock back enough targets, and if Vainless can, you know, trigger his ultimate at the right time. I'm watching Icefeld now with the Pulse Bomb. Uh, great opportunity here with the Graviton Surge going out. Deflect was there, but did not deflect the Pulse Bomb. Unfortunately, Icefeld getting 
mass kills there. Evoke, Huffy, and Watt7 all falling early. Spree and Vainless not long to follow, and the Tracer trying to escape. Icefelt is on the case, does get the kill on Reels, and 90% now for Luminosity. I don't think they're going to be able to battle this back at all. The timing was just too good there. Winston may be able to jump in and stretch that overtime, but I think he went too early. If they collapse in on him and kill him off, it's going to be uh, for nothing. Sini and Ruster getting quills, kills very quickly there will basically secure this fight for Luminosity Gaming. Watt7 finally falls, and that, that should do it as uh, the supports are really the only thing left here. Zave getting focused down, or sorry, not Zave, it is Vainless getting focused down, and they're, how are they flipping the point? There's still so many members of NWA actually alive. Finally, they do address uh, Ice Felt, but what is happening here? Still got blue members standing. Evoke, the last member for NWA, finally over time takes down. That was such a long extended fight. Watt7 actually made it all the way back to the fight, but uh, ends up not paying off. Luminosity Gaming take the round, and we'll move on to the second point with a 1-0 lead. NWA, some good play there. Interesting stuff there with the May to start things off. Did not actually work out too well, but they got a blizzard out of it. They were able to get 80% off the back of it and not able to convert. So Luminosity Gaming starting out strong. Yeah, and this next point is very, you know, it's very favorable for kind of more of a dive composition. And both teams realize that switching over to the Tracer and the Genji. No May on this map to start off, but at the same time, mirror compositions on both sides. So it's all about execution and who communicates the best. Um, Watch out for Sini. Sini has honestly been pretty strong on Genji. He's an overall very strong Genji player. So look for him to capitalize. But Reels, definitely on the Tracer, another threat to be reckoned with. All right, as the doors open, you can see everyone rushing to this point on the Shrine level of Nepal. Favoring the ledge side is Luminosity Gaming as we get started. It's going to be Sini leaping into action as the Genji finding a very quick kill onto Vainless. So quick I didn't even catch it as I was switching views to him and Watt7 falling as well. But Reels and Watt7 actually do get some trades as well. They're hanging out by the Shrine itself trying to stay alive. Sini down to 17 health but does grab the full heal in time before that enemy Genji can take him out. A little bit of a Genji battle. Actually both end up dying in the fray. Icefeld scooping that kill on Happy Cool but it is going to be NWA grabbing the point first just like we saw in the previous round. Yeah, and this is a good start from them right now. They're able to generate a decent amount of ultimate reels, having the ultimate ready. Happy Cool, of course, only at 60%. Insane A, according to that's what chat apparently uh, we've been pronouncing this entire time, is at 82%. So that's obviously a huge positive when that Dragon Blade is about to come up. He needs to wait for follow-up, though. He doesn't really have any you know, potential support ultimates to keep him alive when he does engage. And that gives enough time for the defense to really stack up Happy Cool on the flank. No one's really noticed him. I mean, he might be going straight for this, uh, the Zenyatta. Dragon Blade out now for Sini. Let's we'll see what he can get done. Actually, nothing as Evoki actually hits the last shot on him. Icefelt getting a lot of damage in right now, though. Built up another Pulse Bomb uh, just during this fight. Finds the kills on Evoki and Happy Cool. And that is going to be Luminosity Gaming grabbing the point for the first time here. Taking up against 46% from NWA. Lots of ults available on the side of NWA. So this is going to be a fireworks show for sure. Hafi Cool is going to be who I'm watching with that Dragon Blade trying to find the squishy targets. If he can kill Ice Felt at the beginning of the fight, that would definitely be a huge boon. Yeah, and that Graviton Surge captures three, but luckily Tracer is able to get out of it just in time for that, you know, that Graviton Surge to come in and capture some more targets. I mean, this is back-to-back -back Graviton Surge. There's not much damage being done. In fact, I think they honestly have, I guess I want to say the side of NWA having a great streak right now, able to do a lot of damage and push back onto the point, hopefully able to recapture. That was a, that was honestly a really messy fight, but at the end of the day, they were able to merge out victorious. Yeah, good stuff there. Didn't have to use the Dragon Blade. Graviton Surge got the job done. NWA battling back quite effectively here. Reels did use his Pulse Bomb, and uh, so did Icefelt, but it was NWA coming out on top at the end. I'm watching Happy Cool still with the Dragon Blade. Jumps in, but the sound barrier goes on. Uh, as soon as they start entering the point, Transcendence saves Zenyatta's life. Uh, so two support ultimates coming out here for the price of one offensive ult. Things are now looking good for Luminosity. They do lose Ruster, but they're trading very well. Sini with the Dragon blade of his own is able to kill Evoki looking for Genji might find Tracer but the pulse bomb takes him out good job reels getting a double kill there but can he stay alive very long as he got discorded the answer is no luminosity gaming put their foot down again 38% for them 82% for NWA and this is playing out very similarly to what we saw on the first point 
Yeah, and I mean, they just need to rack up their ultimates together, get their heart percentages high, and not try to, you know, push in without needing to. They don't really have any tools to do this. Their closest tool it will be Spree at 80% right now with the Gravitas. And they kind of just charge in without any better tools to, to deal with it. But at the same time, what is it feel manual ice belt? And that great Gravitas search catches so many people, and that's just Zay going to town on the rest of the team. The real man just take it out, and Spree continuing out with the rest of those kills. So that is a very good positive on the side of NWA being able to take this fight and hopefully soon able to flip this point and they're able to do it inside a rush or just tries to run away tries to not get staggered very late into the game but they're at 84 right now and honestly Ooh. when you get up to 90 this potentially could be pretty bad reels tossed a pulse bomb onto that winston who was off by himself ruster took a lot of damage but didn't get a kill for it so kind of a waste of a pulse bomb unfortunately but 95 percent now means if they can defend just a single more time they will have it pulse bomb would have been so good right there as they were streaming through past him but very quick kill onto minerals going to help them out immensely we've got dragon blades coming out on both sides Sini falls very quickly though in the die 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 and uh, sorry that was not a die 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 i thought i heard a reaper uh, where'd that come from but anyway the dragon blade of happy cool getting the bulk of the damage done that is going to seal it and we're going to head to sanctum at 1 1 happy cool actually taking the time to climb a pillar and emote <laughs> at the end man that's a whew, that's a little that's a little great mechanics on the side of that genji so that's great super solid 1 1 right now proceed into like you said sanctum i really like the stage sanctum i feel there's a lot of room for different characters to you know emerge out there but obviously there's still a lot of these pits that you can you know utilize to knock people off so winston with that problem which will be super good at controlling this central point and you know whoever wins this has a lot of room to potentially you know advance in this game and if they decide nwa the they came to with this victory they're up to zero meaning they only have one game left to go whereas you know if the side of LG wins this, they still have to, you know, finish out essentially what is the best of three. Yeah, they've got to win essentially three control maps in a row or Anubis. So <laughs> could be a tough task for them if they do end up losing here on Nepal. But still anyone's game. The matches have played out very, very evenly so far. Um, NWA, of course, coming from the winner's bracket, do have that advantage. So he's going to be diving on Zave. I'm watching Hafi Cool's Genji right now, diving on Zave very quickly, trying to get that damage in, and Zave does fall, but Spree also going down means even trade Saini that Genji is going to be missed for sure. Tracer getting very low. Icefelt may escape. She does, in fact, find that full heal, but Hafi Cool over. Uh, over his head, I think, a little bit, is going to have to come back to the point. Everything looking good for NWA once again. Hot start. They've grabbed the first three points first each time. Yeah, and of course, very good initial engagement. What they were able to do is peel off the main threat. So even though, let's say, you know, uh, LG was able to dive, LG wasn't able to get as many kills, meaning that the side of NWA was able to sustain out the fight and pincer in and, you know, basically clean up the rest of the fight. And this is exactly what's going right now. They're basically winning these one-on-one -on -one duels that we saw them so well on the offensive side, you know, being able to do and... Man, Hoppy's cool does go down, but Real is still alive and still confronting the backline threats, driving them back out of the point. And they're applying so much pressure right now. No chance for them to even get into them. Yeah, Saini and Icefell really can't even loop around. It's just uh, they're met on every side with lots of opposition. Graviton Surge Transcendences coming out now. We've got 95% for Saini's Dragon Blade as the kills start to pile up. It's going to be NWA grabbing three very quickly there. Unfortunately for LG, the Dragon Blade is out now. He's going to get the kill on Vainless with no opposition. Now working on Zarya. Happy Cool goes down. Spree is down. And Saini may have just flipped the point on his lonesome. Of course, there is still one member alive. And no, he's not going to be able to flip the point for free as Tracer and Winston both react to him. He hops away. Will he be able to escape? Only 15 health at the lowest point. Winston trying to cut off his escape should be able to torch him down. But no, what seven catches the shurikens in the face and Genji stays alive. Yeah, and him staying alive for so long, bought enough time for his team to come in. Hobbyzo does unsheath a Dragon Blade, I think, and unfortunately just gets taken out. Uh, able to kill Icefeld, which is obviously a huge positive, but meanwhile, Vainless does get booped off the map by Mineral, so this 75% is where their first push will, you know, will leave off. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Mineral does have ultimate, so that is a great counter-engage tool right now with that with that sound barrier going down. Sini still up to 70% back on his Dragon Blade, so that's going to be another threat that you have to worry about. Yeah, we've been watching Sini quite a lot. We'll go ahead and switch it over to Icefeld now, who does have a Pulse Bomb and has been doing quite a lot of work as well. Uh, we see the sound barrier coming out for the side of LG to get the fight started. Pulse Bomb at the ready, but he doesn't need it to take out Evoki. And Spree falls as well. Genji now getting focused down by basically everybody. There's a Tracer in the back, also getting no love as half his team is dead already. 
and it's gonna be all LG for this push. Yeah, and the side of NWA didn't really build up any real ultimates to really combat it. So they actually have a lot of time left, so that's no rush for them, but Man and Tin has that Graviton Surge. If I'm on the side of NWA right now, I specifically look to bait out that Graviton Surge. I don't want to use any ultimates. Hey, just bait it out. That's fine, you know, sustain through it. Hey, it's fine that we died, right? They've burned a lot of ultimates there. That's fine. Let's take this next point. We're at 75%. We have one more push to do this. And Rafa, actually, from Team Liquid, uh, is the first person I heard use the term Junk Rush. But that was basically what we just saw. We saw a Junk Rush, where you basically just run at them as hard as you can, force them to hit the triggers on their ultimates. Sometimes you can get two or three more ults out of the team than they necessarily needed to use. And that actually worked okay. There's still a couple of ults available for AWA, but as we get started, Huffy Cool with the Dragon Blade is going to be a driving force. Transcendence does, of course, put a... Uh, Damper on his day. Graviton Surge, though, follow-up after Transcendence means that everything is going to die. Nice dash resets, getting tons of damage in there. Of course, Reels with the great uh, Pulse Bomb into the middle of that. They basically flip the script and all the kills going the way of NWA. No one even died on that push. So if they can just defend basically a single time and not allow LG to you know, sneak in and flip that point. They should feel pretty secure on Sanctum. They're pushing up super far, though, to prevent any... Um, anyone from really sneaking past them and definitely from preventing them to get into a position they want to be in. Sound Barrier coming out now does give them that extra health they need to try and hang on to the point. I'm watching Hoppy Cool keep Zave and uh, the Tracer Icefelt both contained here. He does eventually fall, but 99% now for NWA. Can they survive? Spree goes down to a Pulse Bomb. Reels is kind of the last man standing, but no, Watt7 and Evoki are right there as well. They're going to be able to stall Zenyatta long enough for Genji to go down, and over time will take down. Two points to zero now. Sorry, two points to one for uh, NWA means that on this last point, whatever it could be, they might be able to take a two-map lead. Things are looking kind of scary now for Luminosity. After a good start on Village, they lost both Shrine and Sanctum in a row. Yeah, honestly, that's the last part's unlucky. Yeah, exactly what you said. Rafa basically calls it, you know, the Junk Rush. And th all you want to do is bait out some big ultimates, knowing that, hey, we still have the advantage after this. We still have some time after this. So. That's honestly what they need to wait for. They baited out the Graviton Surge, which is a huge crowd control ultimate, and that really stops a lot of big uh, offensive tactics from them, meaning that it stops the Dragon Blade from happening. It stops a lot of, you know, Tracer. It holds Tracer in, forces Tracer to kind of blink out or recall. So, you know, it, it limits the amount of offensive ability, and baiting that out so early on gives a lot of free reign to the flankers to do a lot of their job better. So let's hope we see a more of the same. The only difference right now is Sini is on that Reaper instead. So he's making sure that, hey, we're going to wait for you to come to us instead of going towards you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. It looks like they want to run onto the point as quickly as possible. And Sini with that Reaper, like you said, hanging in the back line, not allowing Genji or Tracer to get to his healers. And once he sees Winston, it's an easy pick off. He's going for the Zarya now, gets him to half health before falling. But Spree actually getting a couple of kills here for NWA is a hot start again. Hafi Cool and Vainless collecting a couple of kills means that the first point for the fourth time in a row going to NWA, they're going to get that percentage built up. Can they get it to 40, 50, even 70% we've seen in the past here before L flip it back. I'm watching Manitin now basically bringing up the anchor here for Luminosity Gaming as the slowest member is going to be, you know, you're only as fast as your slowest member, so they are going to wait for him before engaging here. Yeah, they do get that slightly split off engage, and then hopefully the defense can potentially kite it back, and that's all they really need to do. Hobby School does take down Zabe. Manitin does take down Vainless, so they trade Zenyatas, which means a lot of healing is gone, but Spree able to get a great kill right before he's able to die. Hobby School is trying to do, do as much as he can, but Sinny's, you know, Death Blossom really doesn't cover much, does a decent amount of damage, but that defensive sound barrier makes sure everyone is topped off and everyone stays alive right now. Ruster still left alone and just gets taken out, so that's another push that didn't really go through. A lot of ultimates are still available on the board for the side of the defending team on NWA. Vainless still does have his transcendence. Real still does have his pulse bomb, so there's a lot of opportunity for them to convert. I was watching uh, Hafi Cool there for a bulk of the time. He actually managed to miss participation on several kills because his team was just killing them too fast. Now he's in a bit of an awkward position here as uh, the team is streaming out right in front of him. He's going to throw lots of shurikens. Deflect is good, but not against those beams. So he uh, needs to get out of there. There's a Graviton Surge from the side of LG actually catching a few members. They get two kills very quickly, but it's not just a perfect trade yet. Hafi Cool does have Dragon Blade available. Will he pop it? He's going to see Tracer right below him and pick this as his moment. He's going straight for Mineral on the Lucio. Gets the kill. Manitim was discorded, but he 
dies in route and Evoki trying to stay alive on this Lucio does eventually fall to the Sini, Reaper, Vainless, and everyone else should be falling as well. That's 90% though for NWA on this first take and that is even better than we've seen in the previous rounds. If they can flip it even one more time, they should be able to secure the map. Yeah, and they have a lot of ultimates to do that test. They have that big Graviton search. And the side of the defending team right now, sure, they have Sini at, with that Death Blossom, which is going to be the game, big game changer to make sure they can't be engaged upon super hard. But they don't really have any super, super big, you know, support ultimates to mitigate a lot of the damage. And they're immediately jumping in on the side of NWA. They don't really care. They're trying to drive down the back. Luckily, Russ was able to take Evo. Spree takes on Sini, even though Sini gets his Death Blossom, but real is able to trade out. And this is a relatively safe fight for Zave, making sure that Spree can't go down and Russ was able to take the Hoppy cool. You know, honestly, this is a really, really distorted fight, but at the same time, I think the side of the offense on NWA is happy with where they are. They managed to bait out, you know, a few ultimates, namely Sinis, and on their side, they have the ultimate advantage very soon. They'll be able to hopefully power through a lot of the damage. It's going to be a, a huge fight coming up here. Spree, I'm looking to kind of push the action with their Graviton Surge as usual. They do have the Pulse Bump follow-up, and they actually have Big Bang combo available on both sides. So I'm actually going to zoom out here as the first Graviton Surge hits. I don't see the Pulse Bomb yet. I hear it. There it is blowing up there on the Zarya. There's a Sound Barrier coming out. They still uh, didn't actually get much for it on either side. We've got the Primal Rage Ult active now from Ruster trying to knock people away from the point, and it looks like Luminosity should be hanging on a little bit better. Only two members standing now, and they are quite separated, so Evoke is going to get zapped down. Now they've given Luminosity Gaming too much time. These uh, last couple of pushes did not go their way, and now things are looking kind of scary. There's a defensive Sound Barrier available for Mineral, and that's going to potentially negate uh, the Graviton Surge coming out from Spree this time. So uh, it's basically do or die now for NWA if they want to win this map. Yeah, honestly, all about how many shurikens Hoppy can hit within the next few seconds. But in the background right now, that great Graviton Surge keeps them all together right now. Two big targets and that Pulse Bomb goes through and, sh and kills them both before the Transcendence can go off. That Transcendence from Zod is basically essentially useless on his own. But Sini able to pick up a lot of the weight and he's kind of still staying alive with that great Death Blossom but are killed and Man, this is just not the way you wanted to go. They were so far ahead and they just gave it up. Yeah, really tough uh, loss there. They let 100% go by over the course of basically three big team fights. Uh, did not work out for them, but man, chat is lulling at some uh, ultimate right now. I'm not sure which one it was, but <laughs> they had a, a lot of great ultimates actually throughout that fight. Oh, it was the Reaper who uh, he hit his die, die, die and died during it. That always does feel bad, but... As we move back into Village, this is the fifth and final round for Nepal. These teams are incredibly evenly matched. That one uh, looks pretty firmly in Luminosity Gaming's favor, even though they did let NWA tick up to something like 90%. Uh, they were able to hang on and just be dominant in every team fight after that. So good stuff from Luminosity Gaming fighting back a little bit. NWA do have the series lead here, but they're not going to let them take Nepal for free. So pushing it all the way to a fifth and final round. Ruster, I'll go ahead and start out on him as he will be likely driving the action for Luminosity. He's also down to 100 HP very, very quickly and has to back out. Yeah, and this is all about that initial con confrontation. See who gets the most kills possible. Spree does take down Sini and Ruster takes a half a goal. And I mean, this is just a recurring trend on the side of NWA. Winning these initial fights, Wills is going on fire with that great double kill. He's just staying alive in the background, harassing Mineral right now, just trying to get a kill. Mineral is, I don't think Mineral is even looking at him in terms of damage, but the rest of Mineral's team has fallen around him. And I mean, it, it, it's so weird that NWA seems to be able to win every first initial fight, but every subsequent fight, they just seem to struggle and aren't able to to convert on the times. Yeah, I wish I had a team that took the point first every single time. Like, it seems like such a great benefit, but honestly, the last percent is the only one that matters in these rounds. So if they can't actually close out the games, that is going to be, of course, a recurring issue for them. Really strong starts, of course, do give you a nice advantage moving, looking for those wins. But Saini uh, getting a nice kill onto Winston. Genji should not be killing Winston as much as he is. So I have to give props to the Genji player here for Luminosity Gaming. Vainless getting a kill there. Spree as well means saying he's not going to be able to do this by himself. And once again, NWA hanging on. This time they're not using their ults willy-nilly. They are hanging on to everything and trying to win these fights without them so that they have them available when the time is needed. Yeah, Reels right there was trying for a cheeky flank, trying to get get behind lines, do some damage initially. But they're all going through the same right-hand entrance, which, you know, NWA really has kind of stacked. So this is already pretty dangerous on their end. And this is all about the great Graviton search that keeps them in there. And that's a great follow-up from the rest of NWA, clearing out the entire squad. 
I just I can't help but think that they may have used too many ultimates. I don't know why they used both uh, Lucio's Sound Barrier and Transcendence at that moment. I think you only needed one and maybe have one follow up. And I, I just feel like that could have come back to bite them. But at the same time, they do have a lot of ultimates up right now. They honestly, they could probably wait for the charge. They can have half equal with that Dragon Blade do a lot, as well as Watts Primal Rage. You know, smack people off the point and saw it out even more. All right, as we engage, Dragon Blade comes out immediately, looking for those supports, finds Mineral and Zave. Both dead at the beginning of the fight, 81%. It's going to be a while before they're back in the fight. Tanks that with no support are going to fall very quickly, of course, to that Discord. Winston trying to do what he can, but without two supports, what are you going to do, really? Hafi Cool saving the day, potentially saving the game as he forces his way back up. He's going to block Zave and Mineral from trying to return to the point. Zoom Yada is in effect to try and keep that overtime going. It's something you have to do just so you don't lose outright. Overtime is triggered, so at least he's doing something right, but all the kills going the way of NWA looks very, very bad for... Uh, Luminosity Gaming, Ruster Falls, and that should do it. Wraith Wraithlock is actually going to manage to contest, but with so many members low or dead, Manatin goes down, even with the grab surge. It's not going to be enough. NWA take this first game and extend their series score to 2-0. There's two more control maps and Anubis left in the pool, so if Luminosity can't win a control map, uh, things are going to be very scary for them. They have to win all three of those in a row now. Hafi Cool, play of the match as Genji, should be a sick Dragon Blade, potentially this one at the very end. No, it's going to be Sanctum into the Graviton Surge. Yeah, and doesn't even use Dragon Blade at all in that situation. Just dashes through, and you know, Genji had, does do, do a lot of damage without his ultimate. It's just a matter of comboing correctly and getting those dash resets. But you know, this match was a little closer than I think you know LDLC would have liked. They were a, a, man, not. LDLC, what, what am I talking about? NWA would have liked uh, because they were able to take so many of those early points and get those high percentages. So that tends to wear down on teams because it makes sure that the enemy team has to step up to the task. They have to immediately win the next few engages and try to flip the point. So when your first take is 90% or 80% and above, that sets a great tempo for the rest of the team. And definitely, you know, props to the fact of NWA for doing that. But LG is keeping it close, but now they claw back for three straight games and they might not have the mental fortitude to do that. It's going to be rough, and I think, you know, Luminosity, they did manage to strike back against LDLC. I can't blame you for having LDLC on the brink because we said it like 10,000 times already today, but LG did manage to defeat uh, them to make it back to the grand final, and we do still have that opportunity for them to try and take this series, but it's going to be a tough mountain to climb down 2 0 already. Taking it to Lijong Tower or Ilios could be rough as they did just lose that control map. Nepal, it was very close, but NWA put their foot down on the very last point. I believe it was 100 to 0. Did they flip it a single time even? No, I don't think so. Not yeah. at the last, no, last I point. So. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, so NWA looking incredibly strong. They actually grabbed the point first five times straight as well, and that can be really tough to battle back against. Some of these points can be really tough to reclaim, especially the uh, Shrine, I think, on Nepal, but that is actually a round that uh, Luminosity Gaming ended up winning. But we do have a AFK for one of the players real quick, so we're just going to hang out here for a moment. I'm Ask Joshi, casting with Scribe. Thanks to the 2,900 of you for tuning in for the Grand Finals. It's been steadily rising, so that's always good to see. Sponsors, of course, Matcherino, Ting, OW Kings, and Gosu Gamers. This actually could be the very last game of the tournament coming up, so make sure you take advantage of that Matcherino link that keeps getting put in chat by Moobot. Use that code, and you can contribute a dollar to the prize pool. Basically, that's you saying, hey, pro Overwatch players, I like you so much, I'm going to give you someone else's dollar for winning this tournament and that feels good right because it costs you nothing it shows nice goodwill Metrino, of course sponsoring lots of great overwatch events uh ilios yes i am the leader sorry guys uh you were afk for a moment so here we go ilios all set casters ready and now we're just waiting for the ready up on both teams before we head into game number two slash three as the score is 2-0, to zero, this will be only our second map being played because NWA started with a 1-0 lead. Saney from Luminosity saying ready, and NWA need just another moment. So, Scribe, any uh, prediction here on Ilios now that we know the map? Oh, gosh, I, I don't know what to say. I want to say NWA could pull this out at the end of the day, mainly because it's been so cohesive in terms of their dive compositions. We definitely see a lot more combination behind the scene in terms of, hey, Hoppy School, like, making sure to communicate with his other members, and they just do so much damage with that, like, and they're so cohesive with it, so I definitely want to give them the victory. But at the same time, Sini has the potential to turn any fight with Genji, so it's not just that. <laughs> You're just reading the lobby chat there. <laughs> oh, just a little bit. Yeah, Hafi Cool does not want to be called 
Huffy. Huffy, Huffy, Huffy is, is cool. Huffy is Huffy cool. Huffy is cool. Uh, but he is cool, man. I mean, is. unless really cool. Huffy is Huffy cool. I feel like it's for some reason the I C just like no, makes an yeah. S sound for it's, me or something. It, it's hard to it's hard to spit it out. It's kind of a tough name. He's got three O's. How do you pronounce three O's? There's no English <laughs> word with that. Uh, anyway, Huffy cool. <laughs> I'll emphasize the three O's this time, but we're loading into Ilios now. You can hear that great map music, but I'll switch the scene once we get inside. And there we go. It's going to be NWA with a 2-0 lead, making sure that... And they did swap sides again. Why do they always do this to me and to every caster ever? They just love doing it. Actually, I was the lobby leader. I could have switched them around, I guess. <laughs> I made that a little easier, but yeah, this... I mean... Ilios mm -hmm. is known for being not really one of the more popular maps, but this first map that oh, we're kind of at right now. I is... screwed it up. They were actually on the right side. No, I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, we have, to, we have to go back and redo it again. But okay. yeah, th this first map is kind of a death pit because it's just everything's down in here and you kind of all aim into a little circle, meaning that Graviton surges are just yeah. infinitely more effective and May Blizzards are also very strong, but they are not going to be running either of those sticking to the same compositions that got them here just dive compositions in the back line so hopefully we'll see a great battle Hafi cool is essentially right now i think he's gonna be on serious pressure to match with uh Sinny right now just making sure he matches up with everything yeah we've had some really good genji battles throughout zave goes down very quickly mineral town as well and Hafi cool setting the pace here for nwa very very well they are looking to grab that point first again this would be again the sixth round in a row that they've claimed the point first here against luminosity gaming obviously they did uh, lose two of those points on nepal but such a great start it's really nice to start out with the point under control every time because they can build it to 70 80 90 percent we've seen and just have that easy retake if they do happen to lose the point to win the round. So uh, definitely a, a hot start once again. I'm going to be taking Ruster's POV this time as the Winston for Luminosity Gaming. Very likely candidate to engage. Also going to be responsible for hunting down Happy Cool if he can. Yeah, and likely for their attacking very forward. But they honestly take down Watt, which is a huge thing. When your damage goes down and a lot of your tank goes down, so Spree and Watt are both down. Baneless is able to trade out on Ruster, but it's all about what the DPS can convert right now. But Sini is able to. Sini is able to take away so much of that fight, and Eisfeld is able to go in for the cleanup as well. So that's a relatively short point from what we have seen on the side of NWA before. But they will be able to push in soon enough. Hafi Cool. 97% with that Genji as the person to watch and Evoke does have that sound barrier ready, almost ready for him to push in. Right, lobbing uh, Zarya Bomb after Zarya Bomb. We got Dragon Blades out on both sides. I'm just trying to find one of them. Here's Happy Cool slicing through Manitan. He also got Zave a little bit earlier, so good kills there for Genji driving the action. You are basically waiting for Genji to kill people sometimes in these control maps, and the fact that he's uh, started off so well is great. He's going to dive Saini as well. He's got way more HP than Saini. He does get the kill on Icefelt before switching his attention back. Ruster and uh, Saini are both super low health. Reels may be able to finish the job, but the sound barrier comes in at a very timely moment uh, to keep everyone in high health reels. I'm still watching him with that pulse bomb and what he's able to do. Ruster takes him out with only like 20 HP or something like that. He's incredibly low on the point, but no one there from NWA to get the follow-up as they are uh, just staggering deaths right now. Spree, the last to fall, is going to ensure another 15, maybe 20% for Luminosity Gaming. Yeah, and the big, big struggle right now here is all about the ultimate charge on the side of NWA. They don't really have a lot of tools to use, and it's really 65%, so they will have to do one of those junk rushes again and bait the fact that, hey, we could have ultimate, you have to, you know, ult safely to defend it. So if they can junk rush and get them to burn two or more, I think that's a win for me. Fire will goes out. Graviton Surge catches a couple of blue people inside. Spree and Evoki both falling means this is going to be a one-sided fight once again. Luminosity Gaming looking at to just wrap things up. Happy Cool should not have used Dragon Blade there, I gotta say. Even though this is potentially their last opportunity to take the point, they should have one more push, and now they will not have a Dragon Blade to do it with. He's going to swap to McCree, though. Kind of interesting as uh, time is running out. McCree much slower than Genji at getting back to the actual point. 97%, 98. We've only got two members up there fighting it out. Graviton Search grabs a bunch of members in time for one 
Mud7 to jump in, but he doesn't use the splash damage. He actually pops his ults to try and stay alive a little longer. Actually, he needed to pop that ult to get to the point in time at all. But Hafikul on the McCree does fall. It's going to be all LG hanging on to the point here. Death after death going the way of NWA. And the first point, even though first grabbed by NWA, LG will reclaim it and take the first point on Ilios. So down but not out again. LG in a position now where they have to win three maps straight to try and earn that thousand dollars. Yeah, so right now it's all going to be about whether or not they can really convert on this map specifically. And, you know, that first map, sure, it is a death pip, and that's kind of like why you have to play relatively safe. It's hard to retake that point, but this map with the giant hole in the middle is going to be incredibly difficult for them to really do any damage on. And they need to play extremely careful. This is actually one of the maps where if you capture it, you can actually push out and punish the enemy team by just, you know, stalling them out in those chokeholds that are present and forcing them to come to you and having those advantages. So this is definitely a very good app for a lot of uh, dive compositions to get anything done. Right as the door is open, we're following NWA through into the action. Reels just diving far ahead of everyone to meet Icefeld, but they actually took different routes, so not going to see uh, anything crazy yet. Watt7 actually diving into the back line, finds Mineral very quickly and gets the kill with help from Reels. They've killed both supports, so hopefully they can get back to their own supports in time to save them. Vainless actually goes down. Icefeld, though, a big loss for LG as it's pretty much just Saini and the tanks at this point. Saini goes down. Good movement from Watt7. He's been playing Winston so well. I've decided to spectate him a little bit more, and he is on the ball. That's seven points straight. Again, now for NWA to get started on these control uh, points. Yeah, and they are applying pressure, you know, just kind of pushing out and making sure they can't, they don't get any easy entry. They're mainly just trying to build up ultimate charge on the side of NWA right now, and on the other side of LG, they're trying to find an exit in, but Hoppy Cool as well as Sini are almost the same ultimate charge in terms of that, and they all both, both wins is leaping to the back line, trying to create enough disruption there. It's all about kiting them and staying alive, but Rios takes down Zavi, but Vainless goes down as well, so Zenyatta's both going down, but Hoppy Cool gets taken down by Sini, and this is, I mean, it just looks like Sini just the better the better Genji in this instance. Yeah, in this uh, last map and this one, Sini definitely uh, got the better exchanges. But uh, on the last point, it was Sini basically just going nuts. And there's another good kill onto Winston. Genji's gotten so many Winston kills uh, throughout this series. It's a little bit unexpected. But Watt7 doing his job definitely just cannot. You know, he finds Genji at the worst opportunities. Huffy Cool going down there means NWA is going to be slowed down again. Iso and Sini just rampaging all over the place now, unable to be shut down and getting almost all the kills between the two of them. Yeah, and this is where LG is punishing them for the fact their ultimate charge takes a relatively long time to come up. And they do have two ultimate charges right now, but Manditon is holding that Graviton Surge, which is going to stop them right in the tracks. And it's almost a hard counter to Genji if you can catch them all there. And they shoot right at that corner right there, so everyone gets trapped in there. Evo goes down, and Wack goes down, Vainless goes down, and Spree ends, I think, ends up killing himself. And this is just, this isn't what you Want if you're on the side of NWA. Sure, you know, you have 59% on the clock with 26 seconds. I mean, you still have a lot of time to, to turn around, but I feel like you're facing ultimate after ultimate every time you run into this pit. It is actually pretty brutal. It's almost like running into a blender uh, with Icefell and Sini playing the way that they are. But Dragon Blade is out now. Hafi Cool does have Sound Barrier as well to try and get some mileage out of this. Uh, he finds two kills pretty quickly, but it's going to be Sini on the other side also with his Dragon Blade getting the bulk of the work done for LG and actually managing to stay alive through the end of it is a very important aspect as they tie it up now. Luminosity Gaming not looking in any danger. Once they took the point, they have not let up control even a little bit, so a uh, good deflect there from Sini keeps him at full health while the rest of his team kind of streams back. That was a, a bloodier fight than usual, thanks to both Genjis having their swords, but LG just standing tall. Yeah, I, I keep on feeling they need to find a different answer because Graviton could be the start of that different answer, but not able to take anyone down, so not a lot of damage they can do, and obviously they're just kiting back, and this is where, you know, LG is winning a lot more of their fights. They just seem more all over the place. And the thing is, there's not enough coordination on the side. But never mind, I take back everything I just did. They're managing to pick up a lot of kills. Somehow winning the 1v1s. They're trying to get back Bassini with that Dragon Blade. It's creating a lot of pain. But Fortune gets taken down by Watt, which is, you know, a great... And this is their one opportunity left. They're about to hit overtime. So they can take it right about now. They won't be able to hit that 99 mark. So it's still at 97, meaning they don't have to worry about overtime being a factor. Meaning that the Wick won't go faster just because they hit overtime once and they 
have one ultimate right now, Evoke will have another ultimate to potentially counteract, you know, this Graviton Surge. But at the same time, it's all about whether or not Cena can get an ultimate up in time, as that's going to be the big factor. But the Big Bang combination with the Pulse Bomb onto, you know, the Graviton Surge is going to be a huge factor. And that's going to be a very dangerous combination. They can't get together. I'm watching Ice Hold now. There goes the Pulse Bomb. Drops it right onto them. Evoki, the only casualty, though, for NWA. And kills are going both ways. Spree going down means it's a 5v4 for Luminosity. And Vainless down as well means Cena and company should be able to hang on, or sorry, flip this point and actually take it. Uh, should be a 2-0 coming in soon. Hafikul does have Death Loss on. He's trying to make it happen, but deflect right in his face. Zarya Bubble, too many counters there. Met with opposition. Reels trying to keep the point contested. Actually, who else is that? Zarya on the point. Spree trying to contest as long as possible. Dragon Blade comes out now for Saini. Can he get much mileage for it? Yes, he does, as usual. And he's had, like, the Genji game of his life here. I think he's died all of uh, two times, one at the very beginning and one when they took it back. But Saini has just been finding Vainless every time. You can even see it there. Nice timing, Saini. Uh, and he's just had a great Genji game. No one was really looking at him until the Dragon Blade came out. And then you had Watt 7 actually kill him. But overall, Saini was just free reigning all over that point. Icefelt, of course, with some great tracer play, allowing him to do that. And NWA unable to find their footing. Again, that is seven points in a row that NWA have taken first, but they've lost three of them. So definitely some issues closing things out. That one was a very, very close one there with 99 to 99 at the very end. But uh, look at that, he made a goal uh, inside the uh, Luminosity Gaming starting shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I do like the approach from Hafiko right now. They realized, I don't think the Genji versus Genji matchup is winning for us. I think Sini is actually taking advantage of the fact that we don't, we might not have the stronger Genji on there. So they are changing over to Reaper. This is mainly to deal with a lot of the backline threats and a lot of the dive compositions. Sure, it's not, it's no hard counter to, to the Genji. You won't be able to flashbang it. But at the same time, you will be able to deal with a lot of the tanks easier. And I think they're more than willing to give up this first, this first point capture if it means they'll be able to sustain this fight for longer. I think, uh, they just need to pay more attention to Saini and try and give him a hard time because they've we've seen now that when he's got time to roam, uh, he's definitely just going to kill your supports over and over, build those Dragon Blades, and then kill everybody. So if you keep an eye on him, it's actually NWA grabbing the point first again. That's eight in a row. Eight King of the Hill control points in a row. Can you imagine if your team actually took the point first every time? It would be such a blessing, but they have had trouble actually hanging on. As we've seen, they are down 0-2 here on Ilios, so this is their last chance to try and walk away with a tournament win here. Keep in mind, if they win three points straight, they will just straight up win the $1,000 plus prize pool, and they are looking to do just that. Yeah, and they, I mean, this play is super well right now. They're mainly focusing on, and they're basically making sure they're not contesting on the point. They're not contesting in small areas. They're doing, honestly, I feel like they're, they're doing a correct strategy, which is they're treating every one of these as one of those initial, like, front to, like, face-to-face -face meetings before the control point opens, and I think it's working for them, right? Because they're not really looking and saying, like, oh, we have to worry about the point, let's contest this. They're mainly trying to break up communication and make it so difficult for the side of LG to really regroup. They're picking everyone off. They're taking good fights, and Hafi cool right now with the Reaper in a good flank position knows, hey, if they want to challenge this, if they want to rush past me, they're going to deal with me in the back lines. Well, we've got a Pulse Bomb ready. We've got Graviton Surge, so Big Bang could be at the ready. Saini is available with Dragon Blade as well. Everything just comes out all at once. I'm going to take the third person POV just to see everything. we got Transcendence, we got Sound Barriers, we got Dragon Blades, we got basically everything. Saini is currently slicing away at Vainless does get the kill again. He's just leaping on him every single time. We've got Happy Cool though with a Death Blossom available. He's laying into that. Winston finds a great kill on Icefeld. That was just luck. Uh, great timing to be there as the Tracer turned the corner and Ruster goes down. They finally win a team fight after taking the point first. They get it up to 80% and win a team fight. So things are looking really good for NWA. They have a Death Blossom still ready to go while the other side only has a sound barrier. They couldn't negate it, but we'll just have to see what the timing is like. Yeah, honestly, it's all about using it after the sound barrier is used, and he's kind of hiding out it. And they don't see him. That sound, that sound, that that blossom gets used at the same time as a sound barrier. So that's all the way fine. But on the side of NWA, they're losing a lot of people very early on. So sure, they capture 99%. Spree does trade out with mineral. So Reels is able to take down Ruster, and this is kind of. I mean, this is kind of a very weird moment because if I'm on the side of the offense right now, or the side of NWA, I'm happy, right? I'm saying, okay, 99%, we just need to recapture, and the moment we recapture, we can tick down and win this entire game. So right now, I'm not, I'm, I'm, 
I guess to say if I was on NWA set, I would be happy, but there's a thought in the back of my head that says, you know, we did this two times before on this exact map, so we might not be able to see the same thing. And Javi cool goes down to Cini again. I feel like Cini, he just does so much better when he's playing the same character as his counterpart and is able to show him up. Good stuff there from Reels getting a very quick kill. Pulse Bomb whiffed a bit, but did get some damage, and he may be able to get the follow-up. No, he's a little bit outnumbered on the point. It's still uh, NWA's chance to take this if Spree can just stay alive. No, he's going to need to back out, actually just dying there to the Reaper. So it's going to be another regroup and fight. That did build some ultimate across the board. You can see very, very... Uh, frequent ultimates on Luminosity Gaming, but on the side of NWA, they're going to have Sound Barrier, and that's about it. Vainless may be able to build up his Transcendence. I'm looking at Spree. I'll actually just watch Spree now to see if he can get up to that Graviton Surge, but they need to be very careful in this engagement with all those ults available. Yeah, that's one Graviton Surge down. That's a Transcendence down. That's a lot of ultimates down on the side. So this is a junk rush that I think they're happy with. They need to just die, reset, die early. They can't keep on living. They need to use the time they have remaining. And they do have just enough time, I think, for one more good engage. And they might have the tools of this. Reels does have that pulse bomb. Baneless will now have, you know, the transcendence. And they actually have all the tools. I think that junk rush actually might have saved them potentially. If they can land a good graviton surge from Spree, lock them out and make sure the side of Yeah, that Graviton Surge catches three and that's exactly what they needed. They just need to keep them together, force out some more ultimate and they're just going to force onto the point. They have so many tools left. Hoppy's cool. is about to die, but that Death Blossom is there. Protection with the use, and he uses it, hopefully, to clear out the rest of the point. Takes down two people, and that's more than enough, I think, for them to continue the point. They have to, they have to stop overtime from eventually happening, but they're just fighting. They're just dueling right now, and they have control of the point right now, ready to capture, and this will be more than enough, I think, to tick off. This should bring it to two to one. Indeed it does. Reels really going off on that last stretch after the Pulse Bomb Graviton Surge. Basically got nothing. They ended up doing a good job. In the end, we had uh, Hafi Cool actually getting the excellent Death Blossom to seal things up. So everything looking good for Luminosity finally, or sorry, NWA finally, as it looked like they may have been losing that map 3-0 to zero after having such a good Nepal and taking out the win there as a little bit of a reversal of fortunes. But NWA got that one point, starting to claw their way back up. They have taken it first every single time so far against uh, Luminosity. So we'll see if they can do it again. All they have to do is hang on. They actually paid a lot more attention to Saini that time. So they at least are focusing on their threats a bit better than previously. Yeah, this is right now another point they can potentially have. The same thing as last and they need to be able to punish uh, use the choke points to really punish and zone them out of this main point. So it's all about winning the first fight and instead of trends that told us anything, we should see done NWA potentially getting the first capture. And yeah, no deaths either way just yet. Zet, Hafi, Cool, and Russ are the first to fall, but finding Zave reels in the back line. Now looking for Mineral. Can he get the kill onto Lucio? Manitin actually ends up falling first as he had some support from across the way. Mineral now off almost by his lonesome. Sini is going to go down. And look at this NWA. For those keeping track at home, that is now nine first points taken by NWA in a row against Luminosity Gaming. And they've lost four of those points. <laughs> Yeah, I feel as though they have such good target selection on the side when they initially engage. They mainly go after the supports and try to break them down one by one. The thing that puzzles me is why they can't continue to do this. And maybe, you know, maybe this will change right now. Maybe they need to specifically look, aim at the supports. But as we can see in the back line, Zave is just staying so safe. He's just saying he's not even like showing his face right now. He doesn't want to get caught out initially. That great grab announcer only catches one, so not really as effective as you would like in seeing you with that dragon blade in the background. I mean, th this is kind of where I, I feel like NWA isn't really communicating their main goals. They kind of left their supports just to die in that aspect. They went for the engage, and that's the super dangerous part is that if you leave your supports on the site and you say, like, we're going to leave you here and we're going to say, we're going to go into the dive, you leave yourself very vulnerable to counterattack like that. Yeah, I think Vainless has been really prone to Saini attacks essentially this entire match. And they're just uh, basically, yeah, they need to stay on top of Saini. And if they do that, they'll be able to protect their supports a little bit better. Reels and Icefelt have been having some great tracer duels over the course of this match. Saini going down again is a really good pickup for NWA. Pulse Bomb at the ready. Could have had an opportunity to use it there, but I think they are winning the fight, so good opportunity, or sorry, good decision there from Reels to save it. Zave goes down, Icefelt getting low, does rewind back to safety, but now doesn't have it uh, to save as himself a second time. Ruster just has to rejoin his people. He's going to leap out into the ocean and rejoin his team. <laughs> 
Yeah, they are caging them out right now. 82% on the clock with 0% in response. So they definitely have a lot of opportunities to push this forward. Hopefully they have a lot of ultimates as well. So that will hopefully be the capture and bring us to game five. As we start to tick up, it's in the 90s. Hoppy Cool does have the Death Blossom, and he gets a lot of damage into Manitin. Finally does get the kill there after the Graviton Surge comes out. Transcendence on the side of Luminosity, try to keep everyone up, but can he do it? Reaper still sitting behind him. Oh no, the rest of his team, though, did die in that engagement, or at least got spread so much that Reaper alone was unable to do anything. Reels trying to keep the dream alive and keep that 100-0, but not going to happen. Luminosity Gaming finally come together with some great ults to steal the point back, and now it's going to be NWA again on the back foot. They've got 99% to only 8. If they win one of the next four team fights, they should be able to force a fifth round here on Helios. They have the luxury of having more ultimates than they do in the past, so hitting a good Graviton Surge could mean the victory. But, I mean, why, why do you use a Graviton Surge on only one target? It doesn't really do much for you. You should have probably saved it and waited for it. But luckily, I mean, they're winning the fight, so maybe it was worth entirely using that one Graviton Surge uh, just to take out like a Winston, take out a big tank target. But they're immediately recapturing this, and there's just no time to contest this overtime. So the it looks Winston's. like rules. I would say the Winston's an okay, if you're going to catch just one person, Winston's a good one because that basically frees you up to find the DPS. Winston is so disruptive, Small. jumping all around, placing shields left and right. Like uh, The fact that he could trigger a thousand HP reset is also kind of threatening. So I think it's not too terrible. And yeah, Vainless got three kills in a row there. So uh, really good stuff from NWA extending the series again. So that's nine points taken first in a row. They've won... Uh, five of them, so maybe this can be the sixth and final one that they need to put away the tournament. We're on tournament point, everybody. Please let me know in the chat if you think that NWA can seal the deal here, or if Luminosity Gaming will fight back. Keep in mind, Luminosity have to win every map in the rest of this event uh, to be become the winners themselves. Yeah, so right now it's a lot about staying out of this. I think that's how NWA potentially could win this game. They struggle a lot more when they aren't, you know, aren't freely able to contest targets, aren't able to have good target selection. So I think staying out of this pit will be what's doing good for them. Right now, Real, Real's just kind of sitting in this pit right now by himself. If they can catch out the enemy tracer in this backline and force him, you know, to recall very early like they did right now, that could be a potential win. But I feel like Will's just isn't landing as much damage and instantly gets traded, which I don't really agree with. He should have played a little safer, but that's all fine right now. They're able to contest the point, getting so much, and they're able to immediately capture this point in the midst of a huge, you know, huge battle between everyone else. Hoppy Cool takes down Rustler, meaning that Winston goes down. A lot of tank threat is not available. They aren't able to dive into the back line, so. I agree with this little change right here. I don't know where Cini is going with the McCree. I think as long as they stay out of the pit, they should be fine. That was another point taken first for NWA. That's all 10, ladies and gentlemen, that we've seen so far NWA have taken first. So Luminosity definitely know what they need to work on for the future, and that is grabbing the point first because they do a great job. Once they actually take the point, they do a great job hanging on to it. Uh, McCree actually wastes the Deadeye. No value for that just yet. Hafi Cool catching the sound barrier is going to allow him to move up and start to push back this Luminosity Gaming team once again. Reaper just cannot find any targets. They're just fleeing from him expertly. Finally, they find Zave and take him out as well as Lucio. So uh, lots of red members still standing. Hafi is cool, or sorry, exactly what he doesn't want us to call him. It does fall and Reels falls as well. That was just a disjointed fight where Reaper could not find the targets that he needed and it ended up being all uh, luminosity. In this case, McCree doing quite a bit of work. So we're going to watch Saini for a bit on that Murakree. Yeah, and this is this is all about the range and the ability to really contest it. And this is where Sini is kind of seeing and saying, like, okay, this is a good idea. This is what I want to do. I want to force him to attack me at range. And more importantly, he's using the flash paint to make sure his support stays safe. So NWA doesn't really have a great option at target uh, selection. And that great Graviton Surge captures them all, puts them all together. Hopefully, he gets some damage, but it kind of puts them in a weird position where Re Rez Real Z is able to put that pulse bomb and do a lot of damage at the end of the day. But, you know, I feel that's where the strategy is behind having that Mercury there. You recognize that NWA is very good at picking out specific targets, very good at you know going to the back line and, and eliminating your squishy supports. So having that flashbang there to control that, make sure there's no one able to dive onto your team, is a very good alternative. I just don't think it's super good in the context of dealing with tanks. 
All right, we're watching reels now on the tracer, uh, trying to find those soft, squishy backline targets, or just protect his team from Icefell. But Saini finds him with a nice flash and a headshot. Tracer getting laid out there. Tranquility is uh, started now for Vainless, trying to keep everyone else up. But it's going to be Luminosity with a strong start. Zave taking some heavy damage, but does stay alive. And now with that sound barrier on the side of NWA, they're starting to battle back. They don't actually have their entire team here. Saini falls during Deadeye, and Hafikul really picking up his game from uh, that beginning of this point to now. He's got Death Blossom at the ready, finding those kills. Watt 7 on the Winston. Some great play again. So uh, NWA looking very strong here as Winston dives onto the point. He hits the Death Blossom only because it's 99% in overtime. They want to win this tournament. They can lock it down with the trickle offense coming in from Luminosity Gaming. I don't know what they're going to be able to do. Saini tries to get the flash and fan, but cannot get the kill on Hoffy Cool. Icefelt Staying on the ledge as Tracer, but overtime starting to tick down now. Tracer does extend it with only 10 HP or something like that. Graviton Surge grabs a bunch, but Manitan can't even walk onto the point. NWA have done it. They've won this Ghost of Gamers EU Weekly without losing a map in the winter semis or the grand final. Uh, really, really great stuff from NWA. Definitely turning heads. Saini does get play of the match. A uh, small consolation for not winning any of that prize money. But NWA, what a great showing for them this week. We can see Saini just dash resetting through everybody. Most likely not even needing Dragon Blade. Might see it come out at the end, but yeah, it doesn't even need it. A good play there from the entire team, Luminosity. But um, NWA started with one win from win. Um, just clarifying for the Russian caster. So NWA win. The whole thing. All right, so that is it for the tournament. NWA are your winners, and I'm sure they're definitely appreciative of all the Macherino donations that have been happening throughout. But I am Ask Joshi finishing up the cast now with Scribe. Scribe, what do you think about those grand finals? NWA showing us their stuff. Yeah, NWA has a very good way of kind of picking up those backline targets and being very good. And that's why they're winning those initial, you know, the initial like 1v1 kind of pushes where you try to establish dominance over the point before the control point opens. Because they're able to target like extremely well and attack the backline, they kind of avoid a lot of those situations where they deal with Genjis. So they're able to whittle teams down and make sure you're not able to stay sustained through the rest of the fight. So very impressed with the way MWA brought it. Yeah, I think Hoffy Cool and um, Reels both made some fans today with some really good uh, Reaper play on Hoffy Cool's side. He actually had a really good Farah game earlier in the tournament. Reels on that Tracer doing such a good, a good job throughout. And of course, the supports Vainless and Evoke doing such a great job. Spree on the Zarya and Watt7 on the Winston. I definitely want to call out Watt7's Winston for being a pretty impressive. I think he's. Winston is my go to tank because uh, I think it was Cloud9's Kai Kai who put it to me a long time ago. In solo queue, people don't know when to engage. If you're the Winston and you're driving the force every time, if you're Zarya and you're, you know, in starting the engagements yourself, that is the best thing that you can do. And a good Winston, when you see it here in pro play, is definitely easy to tell because um, bad Winstons just don't even play him. They play <laughs> Reinhardt, Diva, etc. So when you see a Winston in there, it's because he knows what he's doing. And uh, just congratulating the NWA guys again for their first Ghost of Gamers uh, weekly victory, took, taking out a much stronger, at least higher rated team in Luminosity with a series score of 3-0. to zero. Very impressive stuff. I know that we'll be seeing them again. Uh, Scribe, let's go ahead and close the show. Let people know where they can find you or what you're up to this week. Yeah, so um, you can find me. I'm a writer for Ghost of Gamers. I'm a senior editor right now, so you can find a lot of my content on ghostofgamers.net. And, of course, follow me on Twitter at Scribe1OW uh, for anything I might tweet out. Don't tweet out a lot during the week. And, honestly, this week I might just be doing some random coverage. I know E-League is coming up, so potentially you might be seeing me in Atlanta. But how about you, Josh? What are you up to this week? Uh, this week, I think I'm going to be trying a 24-hour stream on Friday on my own stream, twitch.tv slash askjoshi. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, follows are appreciated. I'll be doing some giveaways and stuff like that. But basically, I'm just a full-time Overwatch streamer. If you guys watching the stream didn't know, I've been casting, I think, something like 30 events now for Overwatch. I do stream my own competitive gameplay as well. So swing on by whenever you feel like it. I stream every day, and I do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash askjoshi, where you can find a lot of videos from those streams. So thanks very much 
much, everyone, for watching. We ended with just about 3,000 viewers. Thank you so much. We'll be back again tomorrow. Ghost of Gamers NA Weekly taking place on Sunday. You are not too late to sign up for that if you want to. And again, i got to thank the sponsors. Before we close the show, Matcharino, always such a good job helping people contribute to those esports prize pools. Ting, check out gg.ting.com for a nice offer for some phone service. OWKings.com and, of course, Ghost of Gamers. Thank you for letting Scribe and myself cast this. And uh, apologies to everyone expecting ZP and Hex today. They both had some issues, but I'm sure they'll be back as soon as they possibly can. That's it for the show tonight, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please check us out on Twitter. Other than that, have a wonderful day or night, and we'll be back for some more games tomorrow.